Yeah, good morning to all. I, it's um, obviously big week um, as I guess fall is ending and we move into the winter um, season of uh, where football is still going on, obviously, but there's a lot of other sports that are getting kicked off and I'd love to wish uh, good luck to our Coach Jay and women's basketball and Bruce and and uh, men's basketball, and I know volleyball has a huge uh, match coming up. So Coach Crouch and his squad were uh, pulling for them also. So a lot of, lot of good things going on this week. Uh, I'm glad I'm not with Bruce in South Dakota. I don't, uh, that wouldn't be a fun trip for me, but um, I'm sure he's enjoying it because he's just, he's made that way. But um, good luck to all those teams this week. All right. Watching the film yesterday, with um, there was a lot of good things, and and some that that um, that were not so good, and then some that had we made certain plays, uh, the game would have been um, firmly in control. And um, I don't know that we can have those not go our way uh, this week in Arkansas. Um, really impressed with them. I think they've lost five games by one score or less to really good football teams. And obviously they're coming off of a big win on the road in Gainesville. And I think they've got a lot of motivation and it's a, it's a very scary team. I think they're doing a really good job. They're really good on defense, stopping the run. And uh, obviously KJ's uh, I've had great respect for him for, for many years now and knew him out of high school. And he's a, he's a great leader and, um, they've kind of gone back to playing um, like they did last year offensively, it appears. So, um, and they seem much more conf confident. So we got a, our hands full with that. Excited about winning at Vanderbilt again. Thank our fans. I thought they were incredible. Showed up and um, really felt like we um, were at a uh, neutral site game at worst and really – just never had any problem communicating or anything, and, and I think our fans were just incredible. So um, we're looking to become bowl eligible. I think that's big in year one. Um, Jarquez has, has had some good games. Peyton has uh, completed around 70% of his passes the last two weeks and five TDs with one interception. That was a bad choice, um, but it's been solid, um, and, and that's with – Several drops, really. I think we had seven drops is, is what I tallied after watching the film. So we had three scores of 50-plus yards. And that's the uh, second time that's happened in 20 years. So we're starting to see some signs of, uh, of some good things, but we've just got to, we got to clean up the ones that are not so good and, and, and make all the ones that come our way that we do have good calls and we execute it correctly and – you know, we had two touchdowns called back. Jarquez scored on two runs, both called back. Both were good calls. They were penalties. And um, just n neither one had to happen. You know, not one time have we ever discussed cutting from the tight end position. Uh, not one time, nor do we practice that. Um, and then Rivaldo's hold on the last one that Jarquez ran in just it didn't have to do it. Um, and so we've uh, we've got to we've got to lock in and be a little more focused uh, and clean some of that up, uh, or or those will hurt us in these upcoming games. Hey, you said last week that you were more involved in the game planning uh, offensively. Seem like are you calling some plays now? You seem more involved in that on the, on the game. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a collaboration. Um, um, you know. I'm very involved, and and and, but uh, Monty is uh, Monty's calling his share too, and it's uh, it's just it's a partnership, and kind of depends on how it's going, and um, you know, but I'm very involved with what's on the call sheet for sure, and what what shouldn't be on there. You like like a golfer watching putts fall. How important is just comp, just seeing plays happen and, and success on offense and just starting to kind of believe? Is that is that a big deal? Yeah, I thought uh, you know we we played with some confidence and swagger last uh, week, uh, particularly the first half, and then um, you know got off to a fast start 
and was really optimistic about some of the, I really, really felt good about our, um, I work hard at, at, at explosive plays and, and the possibilities of those and really felt good about our chances at having some explosive plays and, um, and we should have, we did have, we had some, but it should have been more. And um, I think the more we're successful at doing that, the more confidence and a swagger that our kids will play with. Hey, Coach, uh, with KJ Jefferson, getting to watch him over the years, he's so difficult to bring down. I know you emphasize tackling in practice, but how much is that going to be a point of coaching this week to make sure that you bring him fully to the ground because he is so strong? Yeah, he is, it's just amazing some of the tackles he gets out of and then extends plays. So that will be uh, certainly an area that uh, we've got to – I mean, you, you watch him enough, you know you're not going to get him on the ground every single time. You just hope that the, those are not um, explosive runs or explosive passes that happen after you um, miss him. Um, but he's very, very strong and very, very difficult to get on the ground. Coach, a couple of weeks ago, um, you mentioned that you had a, what you you phrased a put up or shut up, you know, conversation with Peyton Thorne. He averaged about 30 throws a game at Michigan State before he got here over the last two weeks. You've thrown the ball significantly more. Had he expressed any frustration to you about the volume of throws uh, in the game plan? No, not not about the volume. We we were both frustrated, and we we talk openly. But uh, I don't ever remember. It wasn't a, a case where I need a certain volume of throws. I mean, there's a lot of really good football teams that are finishing games now. If you go look at the stats, 12 for 19 or 16 for 19. And um, it, it's never about volume uh, for him nor I. Um, it's about executing what the plan is and executing it well and um, throwing accurate balls to the right spot. Um, so never been one to say it needs to be X amount, nor, nor has, has he expressed that either. Uh, yes, you. What um, status of Avery Jones this week? And if he does return, uh, what will be the plan for Connor Lou? Yeah, I don't know yet. Um, um, I haven't uh, talked to Robbie and the medical staff yet um, about – they probably we probably won't know until Wednesday or Thursday what Avery status is, and um, you know, Connor still will play some. I don't think him being out the last three weeks, um, particularly when it's a lower leg injury, that he's going to be ready to go out there and play 60, 70 snaps. So um, if he is available, it still will be a shared uh, responsibility. Here, um, this time last year, you guys at Liberty went to Arkansas and, and won that game. I know you said kind of each game you sort of look at your team and motivate them in a little bit of a different way. What do you remember about that day that, that got them up to kind of have that kind of performance to get that win? Yeah, we, we had uh, come off of a big win against BYU, and um, I believe it was after an open week that we traveled to Arkansas. Um, the first thing I was concerned about is uh, my experience in Arkansas in November has not been pleasant. Um, the two times we went there when I was at Ole Miss, the weather was atrocious. And uh, I was just thankful that when we went at Liberty, it was actually a nice day. And it appears this Saturday is going to be fairly nice. Um, you know, I, I tell our teams the truth. And told, I remember telling them, that, listen, you're the underdog. You shouldn't win this game. Um, but that's what makes it fun, you know, to go and, and give it a shot and why, you, and why you play the game. And you don't have to be better 10 times. You just have to be better that, that one day. 